Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron, I am so grateful you're here with us today. We're going to be looking at Codex Vaticanus and corruptions contained therein. Thanks for being here. Let's get started. We're on brandpluck.com, Will Kinney's wonderful research, or at least research he presents. Maybe somebody else did the research. Vaticanus omits the following verses while Sinaiticus retains them. Matthew 12, 47. So that's why the ESV omits that verse, but the NASB, NIV, Holman, and the Net Version retain it. Luke 23, 17, corruptions in Vaticanus. This verse is omitted in B and the NASB. B is another terminology for Vaticanus. Uh, NIV and ESV, yet it's in Sinaiticus and the majority of all Greek text. It reads, for of necessity, he must release uh, one unto them at the feast. B omits Luke 23, 34. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Hmm. I wonder why they would omit grace and forgiveness with inquisitions. and like While it is retained in Sinaiticus, and this time kept in the NASB, NIV, and ESV. Hmm. Vaticanus also omits the entire verse, 1 Peter 5, 3, but it's found in Sinaiticus and the majority of all manuscripts and Bible translations, such as neither, and here's what it, Vaticanus omits, neither is being lords over God's heritage, but being in samples to the flock. I wonder why it'd admit being lords over God's heritage. You can figure it out. However, both Sinaiticus and Vaticanus completely omit all 32 Greek words in Matthew 16, 2, and 3, yet they're still found in the NASB, NIV, ESV, in the net, etc. He answered and said unto them, When it is evening, you say it will be fair weather, for the sky is red, and in the morning it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. Oh, ye hypocrites, you can discern the face of the sky, but can you not discern the signs of the times? Not in Sinaiticus or Vaticanus, but modern versions for some reason still include it. A total inconsistency of modern textual criticism is seen here in all its absurdity. There's literally hundreds of words and many whole verses omitted from most modern versions based primarily on the omissions found in Sinaiticus and or Vaticanus. Yet right here in Matthew 16, 2 and 3, even though both Sinaiticus and Vaticanus omit all these words, versions like the NASB, NIV, RSV, RV, ASV, ESV, ISV, and the Net, and the Holman Christian Standard continue to include these two verses in their versions. In Luke 16 and 12 we read, And if you have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? So read Sinaiticus and the majority of all the manuscripts, but Vaticanus, which nobody follows, says, who shall give you that which is ours? John 17, 15, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world. Vaticanus says, I do not pray that you should take them from the evil one. Oh, man. Acts 10, 19, is it three men or two men? Further textual confusion, both by Westcott and Hort and the two so-called oldest and best manuscripts, is further seen in Acts 10, 19. In the King James Bible, we read, While Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. The three men refer back to verses 10, 7, and 8, where we read that Cornelius called two of his household servants and a devout soldier of them that waited on him continually. He sent them to Joppa, three men. So reads of Sinaiticus and the majority, but Vaticanus says two men. So nobody follows the Vaticanus reading. Acts 20, 37, 216 souls or about 76. Vaticanus alone has the silly reading of about 76 in the verse. Nobody follows the Vaticanus reading. So why do they follow it other places? You say, well, the papyri agrees rarely. The Holy Ghost is relating the shipwreck that occurred when Paul was on his way to Rome. The scripture says, and we were all in the ship, 216 souls. Uh, Romans 11, six, 11 and 6 says, And if by grace, then it is no more works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it's no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. 
When we examine the Vaticanus manuscript, we find amazing blunder right here on the surface. Vaticanus turns things on its head by saying, but if it be of works, then there's no more grace. Otherwise, work is no longer grace. Nobody follows Vaticanus reading there because it's heresy. Works-based salvation. Hmm. Who would want oh, Vaticanus? Hmm. All right. Critical text versions continue to change and breed uncertainty. First Corinthians 5.5 5, that the Spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Here the word Jesus again in the majority of all Greek texts including Sinaiticus. So reads Tyndale's 15.24, the Geneva Bible, the KJB, NASB, um, RV, ASV, Darby, Young's, Revised Standard, J.B. Phillips, The Voice, Modern English Version, just to name a few. However, Vaticanus omits the word Jesus. Lord Jesus takes away deity of Jesus. And so does the NIV, NRSV, ESV, and the ISV. But now the 220 edition of the ever-changing NASBs have decided to omit the word Jesus. Read Lawrence Vance, Double Jeopardy. It's absolutely amazing. Metzger quotes it as an authority. Notice that the previous RV, ASV, and NASBs all said the day of the Lord Jesus, and so did the previous RSV. The Vatican supervised critical text versions continue to disagree even amongst themselves from one edition to the next. NASB in one place. Can you guess who else reads like the ESV, NIV, NASB 220? You've got it, the Jehovah's Witness New World Translation. And it just so happens the modern Catholic versions like the St. Joseph NAB of 1970 and the New Jerusalem Bible of 1985. 1 Corinthians 13, 5, speaking of charity, charity seeketh not her own. Vaticanus alone reads, love does not seek that which is not hers. The opposite meaning. In 1 Corinthians 15, 54 and 55, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O grave, where is your victory? In Vaticanus, the verse reads, death is swallowed up in controversy. O oh, death, where is your sting? O oh, grave, where is your controversy? So, you can see terrible, terrible things in Codex Vaticanus. It, it'd be humorous in a sense if it wasn't so sad that scholars take this so seriously and use it. 1 Peter 1.11, the spirit of Christ which was in them. Vaticanus alone admits of Christ. Talking about the deity of Jesus, the oneness of God. 2.6, he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Vaticanus alone omits on him. 2.24, 1 Peter, who his own self bear our sins. Vaticanus alone reads your sins. 2.24, for ye were as sheep going astray. Vaticanus alone omits for ye were. In the Gospels alone, both Sinaiticus and Vaticanus omit the following verses. Matthew 17, 21, 18, 11, 23, 17, Mark 7, 16, 9, 44, 46, 11, uh, 26, 15, 28, Luke 9, 55, and 56, 17, 36, John 5, 4. They're found in the majority of the remaining Greek text we have today. The NASB of 1972 omitted all these verses, but 1977 put them back in, but with brackets. So did the NASB 1995, but in the NASB 220 edition, they've once again omitted them from the text. The ever-changing word. The NIV and ESV continue to omit these verses entirely. So absolutely amazing. And so, we have just Bible babble when you use these modern versions. That NIV alone is 64,000 words shorter than the King James. I remember the first time a real pro NIV person I quoted, they said, You're lying. You're, that's not true. He never came back and told me I was right. But I do remember later, this has been several years ago, he discovered it was in fact true. So God bless. We love you. God has preserved his word in English. It's in the King James. Let's use it in this end time hour. Don't change your sword in the midst of the battle. We need it. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Bye-bye.